Hi, Black Cat Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a crime drama movie named White Boy Rick. The movie starts by showing a gun show in Ohio in 1986. A guy named Rick Wesh Jr. is looking at some AK-47 guns and talking about the price with the person selling them. He sees that the gun has features that match AK-47s made in Egypt, not the ones from Russia that the seller is saying. He gets his dad, Rick Wesh Sr., will call him Richard, to come and check. They make the seller agree to give them a big discount, or else they'll tell on him, and he might lose his license. Next, the dad and son go back to their house in Detroit. Richard talks about how they're like strong lions surrounded by weaker sheep in the world. Richard sells guns on a smaller scale and hopes to open a video store someday. Rick, his 15-year-old son, usually just goes along with whatever's happening. When they get back home, they notice another car in their driveway. Both Richard and Rick know it's Ty's car. They step out of the car, and Richard takes an AK-47 out. He quickly goes into the house where he finds his daughter, Dawn, who is Rick's older sister, kissing her boyfriend, Ty. Right away, Richard figures out that she might be on medications and tells Ty to leave the house. Dawn quickly runs out after him, even wearing only her underwear. Their grandparents, who live very close, arrive just in time to see everything happening. Richard makes things calm down, and then they all go out to enjoy some custard ice cream. At night time, Richard is almost done making things to make the AK-47s quieter. He's also talking to Rick about something called upselling. Rick takes this idea and uses it to sell the AK-47s to a group of local gang members he knows. He makes a lot of extra money by convincing them to buy the quieter things and gets some approval from the gang's boss, Johnny Curry. Rick begins spending time with them and going to parties at a skating rink that's popular with the gang and some dishonest police officers. Early the next morning, Dawn wakes Rick up and says she's leaving. Rick figures out correctly that she's going to stay with Ty. He tries to convince her not to go and to leave Ty. But Dawn goes anyway and gives Rick a way to reach her asking him not to tell their dad. But their dad, Richard, sees her leaving and watches as she and Ty drive away. Later, the FBI starts bothering Richard because the guns he's selling are ending up with the gang members in town. FBI agents named Alexandra and Frank talk to him. They know about the silencers he's making that aren't allowed, and they say they will catch him eventually. They ask Rick if he knows anything about the gang members, but Rick doesn't say much. He only tells them that the gang members they're asking about are already dead. Later that day, Rick is spending time with the gang while they choose fancy suits for Curry's upcoming wedding to the mayor's niece, Kathy. Curry talks to Rick about being respected, and he shows that he respects Rick by asking him to try on a suit, kind of inviting him to the wedding in a hidden way. Rick goes to the wedding and meets Art Derek, a big drug dealer from Miami. On their way back from the wedding, Rick is with his gang friends Nug, Boo, Freaky Steve, and Ed when they come across some girls from their school. Rick calls out to Brenda Moore, who he has a crush on from school, and invites her and her friends to join them. They all go together to a drive-in movie theater, and Rick gets close to Brenda. A few days later, while returning home after a night out, Rick sees a stuffed duck on the side of the road. He picks it up as a gift for his sister. Suddenly, a car approaches and the people inside turn out to be the same FBI agents he encountered before, along with a police officer focused on medications. They tell Rick that the quiet AK-47s he sold to the gang were used in a murder. They say they can arrest his dad unless Rick helps by buying medications, so they can gather proof against the gang. Feeling trapped, Rick agrees to cooperate. He buys medication from a local dealer and gives it to the agents. After a few times, they give him a large amount of medication and ask him to sell it, so he fits in better with the gang. They promise he can keep the money he earns. Rick sells the medication and keeps $4,000. Later, Curry talks to Rick and tells him he knows about Rick selling medication to the gang's customers. Curry warns Rick to be more honest and lets him sell medication alongside other dealers, as long as Curry gets his usual share. After a few months, Rick is enjoying a good life with the gang, even going to Las Vegas for a big boxing match. Curry had been told by a customer named Leon that he arranged ringside seats for them in Vegas and promised to have the money ready when they returned. But when they arrived at the fight, 
They were denied entry because Leon had given the tickets to a different gang leader. After the match, there was a party, and the other gang leader showed off in front of Curry. This made Curry very angry, so he attacked and killed the rival gang leader using a champagne bottle. After Rick and the gang came back from Vegas, Curry told two of his guys to go to Leon's house and kill him. But when they got there, Leon had already left. The two gang members shot at the house from outside, and sadly, one of Leon's young sons was hit and killed by a bullet. This became a big story, and now the police were arresting anyone who had AK-47s. Both the gang and even Rick's dad, Richard, were getting rid of their guns. Curry got his gang, including Rick, together and told them that they needed to be super careful now. He said he'd do anything to avoid going to jail. When Rick got home, Richard was on his way out and mentioned that he got a goldfish as a gift from a customer. About an hour later, Nug, Rick's friend and fellow gang member, came over. Rick got him a drink, but when he turned around, Nug shot him in the stomach and ran away. Rick had a long surgery and slowly got better. He was in the hospital with a fake name to keep him safe. The FBI agents told him that because he helped, they were able to arrest Curry and most of his gang members. Afterward, Rick and Richard were driving back home and talking again about their plan to open a video store. Rick wasn't sure if they would actually make it happen, and this made Richard upset. He got so distracted by their argument that the car almost crashed, but luckily, both of them were fine. Rick then asked his dad if he could go back to selling medications, thinking it would give them a better life. At first, Richard disagreed, but after a while, he agreed, and Rick started selling medications on the streets, making a lot of money. Not long after that, Rick and Richard went to a house where people were using medications. They found Dawn sleeping in one of the rooms. Rick told her they were taking her home, but she resisted and made a lot of noise. Back at home, they kept her in her room to help her get off the medications. It was tough at first, but after a few days, she got better. After selling medications for months, Rick earned enough money to make his dad's dream of opening a video store come true. So, Richard finally managed to open the store he had wanted. The morning after, someone knocks on Rick's door. A little kid tells him that his sister, Brenda, had a baby, and it's Rick's child. Rick and his dad, Richard, go to Brenda's house to meet Rick's baby daughter named Keisha. They take turns holding the baby. A few days later, Rick talks with Curry's wife, Kathy, at the skating rink. They end up going to her place. Kathy shares that if Curry had been wise and only trusted the people she introduced him to, he wouldn't be in jail, leaving her alone. Rick and Kathy then become intimate. Over the next year, FBI agents suddenly rush into Rick's house and arrest both Rick and Richard. Rick is charged with having medications with the intention to sell. Since he had more than 8 grams, he could face a life sentence in prison. They talk to FBI agents Alex and Frank. The agents explain that the FBI will deny any connection with Rick publicly, but they might help reduce his sentence if he cooperates as an informant for them one last time. Rick gets Kathy to assist with a big shipment of medications. The FBI swoops in, arrests everyone involved, and ruins the deal. Unfortunately, they reveal Rick's name on TV as the person who triggered the arrest, making him a target. At his court trial, the jury decides Rick is guilty, and the judge gives him the harshest sentence of life in prison. Richard confronts Alex and Frank, but they say they never made any promises for Rick and that it's the end. A whole year goes by, and Dawn and Richard go visit Rick in jail. Rick's daughter Keisha is with them. Rick tells Dawn to make sure Keisha sees his picture every night. Then Richard talks to Rick about his case. He says that the strict life sentence for drug crimes might change soon. Rick feels really sad because he thinks his life is ruined now that he's in prison. Richard starts to cry and says he's sorry he couldn't give Rick an easy life like he wanted. After that, Rick is taken back to his cell. Richard, Don, and Keisha leave to go home. In the credits, they show that Rick stayed in prison for more than 30 years. He held the record for the longest time spent in prison for a nonviolent crime in the state of Michigan. Finally, in 2017, he was let out on parole. His dad, Richard, passed away in 2014. His daughter, Keisha, is now happily married and has two sons. You can hear the real Rick West Jr.'s voice in the background saying that many people didn't think he deserved to be in prison, but he's feeling happy and hopeful now.